Drama in the courtroom, the judge in the Hunter Biden case put his deal to plead guilty to tax and gun charges on hold, subjecting attorneys from both sides to three hours of questioning about the agreement. Senior national correspondent Terry Marin is at the courthouse in Wilmington, Delaware. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. This morning, the big question for prosecutors and for Hunter Biden's attorneys is, now what? They thought they had a deal, one that would have closed the books for good on the many legal problems of the president's son. But in a wild, contentious three-hour plea hearing, federal judge Mary Ellen Noriega picked apart their unusual deal, and she blew it up. This morning, for the first time, we are seeing the details of the deal Hunter Biden struck with prosecutors before it collapsed in court. In court documents obtained by Politico and a source with direct knowledge confirming their authenticity with ABC News, prosecutors promised the president's son legal immunity for any other crimes that might be covered by information uncovered by the investigation, including lavish spending and various business deals. In 2017, Hunter receiving over $1.6 million from Chinese companies, some $666,000 from domestic business interests, half a million dollars from a Ukrainian energy company, and money from a Romanian business and a multinational law firm. The document adds that in 2018, Biden continued to earn handsomely and spend wildly while in the throes of addiction amassed another $2.6 million in income, and essentially ignored his tax obligations. Hunter Biden's lawyers had reached the deal with the U.S. attorney for Delaware, David Weiss, who was appointed by former President Donald Trump, but kept in place by President Biden. Under the terms, Hunter Biden agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges, and prosecutors agreed not to prosecute him for a felony count of illegal possession of a firearm, as long as he met conditions like staying drug-free. But from the start of the hearing, federal judge Mary Ellen Noriega poked holes in that deal, calling it atypical, even questioning whether it was constitutional. Noriega, also appointed by Trump, peppered both sides with questions that drove at one key issue, whether Hunter Biden would be granted immunity from prosecution for other possible crimes. When a prosecutor said no, Biden's lawyer shot back, then the deal was null and void, sparking gasps in the courtroom. With the deal falling apart in real time, both sides huddled on and off for negotiations, sometimes right out in open court. One of Biden's lawyers even heard telling prosecutors this is, quote, really bad for everyone and threatening to rip the deal up. Through it all, Hunter Biden appeared visibly agitated, his future hanging in the balance as prosecutors made clear their investigation is ongoing. After three hours of back and forth, Judge Noriega deferred the deal for now, telling both sides, she would not be a rubber stamp and acknowledging the little bit of a curveball that she'd thrown into the proceedings. So now the judge has given both sides 30 days to come up with a deal she will approve if they can. And the White House, uh, they're deflecting questions on this. The press secretary is saying that Hunter Biden is a private citizen and this is a personal matter. George. Okay, Terry, thanks. Let's bring in our chief justice correspondent up here, Thomas, our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. And Dan, what a stunner this was. It seems like no one saw it coming. Uh, no, I mean, look, plea deals do fall apart on occasion. It's rare, but they do, just not usually for this kind of reason, where it seems like the prosecution and the defense both had not put in the language properly and had not even reached a formal agreement on a critical term in there. But remember, yesterday morning, I said to you, when it comes to Hunter Biden, anything can happen. And I think that's exactly what happened here is the level of scrutiny. And Pierre, what do we know about this ongoing investigation? Well, I think we can take them at their word when they said in open court there is an ongoing investigation. Specifically, they mentioned that they're looking at this whole issue of whether he properly registered as a foreign agent. So that's the key. But one of the things that uh, his defense attorneys have made the point of, look, they've been investigating this man for half a decade, half a decade. And if they had a more serious charge, you would think by now they would have brought it. But clearly, there's still something open in that they're looking into. But that's about where it stands. Right, and of course, these, these investigations began under President Trump. Exactly. And, and Dan, so what happens now? 30 days for the size to reach group. You expect that's going to happen? I do. I expect that they'll be able to work something out. They will figure out exactly what the scope of the immunity is, what is exactly the conduct, what exactly is the timing uh, that is covered here. Uh, I think they'll get a little more specific on the language with regard to the gun charge, which, remember, isn't technically a plea, which is just an agreement not to prosecute. And I think that they're going to figure that out and come and bring it back to the judge. Dan Abrams, Pierre Thomas, thanks very much. Well, hey, 
Hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.